Kingdom Hearts 3 Remind is in our sights and in our grasps. Not only does it offer us more playable characters, awesome battles, and an extreme amount new content in terms of playability, but it also has a tremendous amount of lore going into the future of Kingdom Hearts, as well as the past. And with that being said, I'm pretty sure that it's agreed around the globe that the biggest piece of lore that we got for Kingdom Hearts Through Remind comes out of the secret episode. And what the awesome thing is about the secret episode and going forward with the Kingdom Hearts series, it harkens back to lore from the past outside of Kingdom Hearts and it looks like we might be getting a lot more than we bargained for out of the head of Tetsuya Nomura, specifically on how Sora could be connected to the pervading world of Final Fantasy and a specific story told within its grand lore. What's up guys, it's HMK once again with another Kingdom Hearts 3 Remind DLC video. It's been two weeks, we're gonna go full throttle with the theories, lore, and takes from this awesome DLC. Now of course, off the bat, this has gigantic Kingdom Hearts 3 Remind end game spoilers. I had to dodge around that for the opening of this video, but there goes your huge warning. With that being said, if you're ready, let's strap on in and dive directly into the darkness. Now let's get this out of the bag. This deals with Sora and Yazora's interactions, specifically one of the endings when battling Yazora, and that ending specifically has to deal with the ending of Sora losing against Yazora. A lot of people tag this as the bad ending, bad ending, good ending, true ending. It really is up in the air. I'll have a video on that specific notion and principle out very shortly. But for this video's sake, we're just gonna refer to it as the bad ending. Because I mean, you lose. <laughs> and after Sora loses, Yozora replies, sorry, but I don't lose. In which Sora seems to crystallize getting frozen in a giant ice crystal. But I say ice because that's what a lot of people are thinking that he was frozen. However, I've seen this somewhere before. And I know that Final Fantasy fans have definitely seen this somewhere before. That's right, it looks like Sora is entering Crystal Stasis, which is a huge lore aspect within Final Fantasy, or I should say the Fabula Nova Crystallis compilation within the Final Fantasy series, which is made up of the Final Fantasy 13 subseries, as well as Final Fantasy Type-0 and Final Fantasy Agito. And yes, once upon a time, Final Fantasy vs. 13, which went on to become Final Fantasy 15. Fabula Nova Crystallis literally translates to the new fable of the crystal, and thus the lore within these games have a lot to deal with crystal, the crystal, or crystals. And this form that Sora takes on, this crystal stasis, specifically comes from the Final Fantasy XIII subseries and Final Fantasy Type-0 within Fabula Nova Crystallis, having to deal with the concept of Lassie, Falsi, and Seath. And here's the TLDR for those that need to be aware. A Lassi is a person chosen by the Falsi, which are divine supernatural beings, but I'm not going to go too much into their lore. Anyways, Lassis are branded by Falsies and are granted tremendous magical and physical powers. However, they're also given a focus, rather a mission or a job, a role so to speak, that they must complete on behalf of the Falsi. Now here's where we get into the juicy part. If a Lassi fails to fulfill their focus, or something else <laughs> in game spoilers, they will become a monster known as a Seath. But that's not really the important part for Sora, or is it? Anyways, if Lassi does fulfill their focus, they are granted the honor of crystal stasis, in which they are crystallized, put in stasis, and, according to legend, are granted eternal life. But when you dive into what that means, that eternal life doesn't sound too good. <laughs> as awakening from crystal stasis could take forever and have a lot of strings attached to it. But for the sake of this video, I'm gonna break it down as quickly as I can. If a Lassie fulfills their focus and becomes a crystal through crystal stasis, the false C can awaken that Lassie from crystal stasis and give it a new focus. So as long as you keep going in line with these focuses, the false C can reawaken a Lassie as many times as they want, but that kind of eternal life doesn't really sound like a good deal, right? So going back to Sora, 
Sora, yeah! If Sora becoming a crystal has anything to do or anything to be like crystal stasis that comes out of Fabla Nova Crystallis, then that is actually big yikes. As that would technically make Sora a Lassie, and becoming a crystal means he has completed his focus. And that would play onto the words of Yazora saying that I will save you, I will save Sora. Because that would mean that Yazora would have some knowledge on this whole legend of crystal stasis. And if it's anything like how we've seen with Lassies, the Falsi, and Seats, then Yazora is seeking to save Sora from his role and fate as a Lassie. Which makes you really think about it because I had to go back and hear what I just said. And this will go in line with Verm Rex being the surviving remnants of Final Fantasy vs 13 because originally that game was going to deal a lot with the crystal, you know, originally being part of Fabula Nova Crystallis. It could be that these concepts leaked out of Nomura's mind and into Kingdom Hearts. And it should be noted that in Final Fantasy 15, you know, what vs 13 eventually became, the crystal stasis was a little bit referenced at the end of the game when Noctis goes inside the crystal for 10 years it's not the same thing but you know the surviving connections are there and it seems that those connections are surviving a lot more in Kingdom Hearts 3 and when you incorporate all of this talk about focus crystal stasis Lassie not only does it really make you wonder that this is indeed the bad ending because it is Sora's bad ending because that fate of crystal stasis it ain't that great and it makes you wonder what his focus was. One cool theory that I saw is that his focus was that he was supposed to act as the bridge to the gap between Kingdom Hearts and Final Fantasy, specifically Final Fantasy Verse 13 by meeting Yuzora. And by finally truly coming into contact with this character, bridging the two worlds, he has fulfilled his focus and became a crystal through crystal stasis. And that is probably why Yazora said that it's time to end this, and sorry that I don't lose. He was told to save Sora, and him saving Sora is saving Sora from his fate of being something akin to a Lassie. And if this is true, then who would Sora's falsy be? Man, the rabbit hole just goes deeper and deeper, but conversely, in the good ending when Sora beats Yazora, Yazora says, my powers looks like my powers aren't needed yet. And that when you connect the two endings, he probably means that his powers to save Sora from being put into a crystal through crystal stasis as a Lassie aren't needed yet because Sora seems fine. Perhaps Sora has that power to change fate, to change destiny, you know how he did with the power of waking. And maybe that is the power that someone like Yazora would need back in his world, his realm, his universe, that might be affected more by the concept of crystal stasis and falsy than what Sora is. Because right now, it seems that this concept of crystal stasis seems to be something pervading the entirety of reality when it comes to Kingdom Hearts and whatever universe that Verm Rex and Yazora are from. Not exactly something that would pertain specifically to Yazora, although Yazora, you know, Verm Rex versus 13, that's kind of where it's leaking from. But who knows? Tetsuya Nomura was on the team when it came to the Fabla Nova Crystallis series, and that apparently to each game within that subseries, each director had free range and interpretations on these specific elements. And that Nomura's interpretation of these elements are forgotten ideas that are given new life in Kingdom Hearts through Kingdom Hearts 3, Remind, and eventually Van Rex. But to throw all of this into the mix, that's why I made that joke on Twitter not too long ago about how Kingdom Hearts fans had to go rush and play Final Fantasy 13 in order to understand what happened in the bad ending. It's honestly a lot to take in, but I want to bring you guys up to speed and get your thoughts and theories on what this could mean moving forward with the Kingdom Hearts series and what it could mean for Varam Rex and Namora's Revenge. With that being said, let me know what you thought in the comments section below and share up the video to keep the conversation going. Please give the video a like as I put out Kingdom Hearts content every week and it's gonna get really big now that my spoiler ban is gone. Big thanks to all my Patreon supporters for help making this video happen. If you want to find out how you can support HMK for just a dollar a month, please check out my Patreon page. Alright guys, until the next Kingdom Hearts 3 Remind DLC video or a video on the future of Kingdom Hearts and Varen Rex, this has been HMK and I'll check you guys later. So you haven't subscribed to HMK yet. Don't piss Xemnas off.